Thank you for joining today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. And thank you for having a desire to be your best at work and helping your organization achieve success. This podcast focuses on our tactical actions to improve workplace culture, and these tactics align to our nine principles for organizational excellence. While the lasting impacts of COVID-19 are still unknown, this pandemic has already begun to drastically change the way organizations conduct business. Organizations across many industries will be facing a decline in resources, and we will be forced to cut costs. Even in these most difficult times, we have opportunities to grow and learn. So today I bring back to the show entrepreneur and leader, Quint Studer, who I first interviewed in episode 71, but focused on an article he wrote about what Winston Churchill would do as a leader to manage through a crisis. I bring Quint back because over the years I've learned from Quint how to help leaders focus on what matters as they face financial struggles and changes in the external environment. Now bring him back to this show so that you can learn from him as well. So Quint, welcome back to our show today. Glad to have you with us. I'm excited to be here, even though it's a very difficult subject. I'm I'm glad to be with your group because you know I consider educators my peeps. You know, that's where I started off and that's still a big love for me is teaching. I get to teach a little bit now at some universities and colleges. And of course I teach a lot of small business, so I'm I'm just thrilled to be with you and um, your listeners. Yeah, thank you. And let's just start with uh, just kind of, I think, the question that is on all of our minds. And and that is, you know, during a time of crisis, our as leaders were under pressure to reduce costs. I mean, that's what comes at us is this concept of reduction of costs. So what advice do you give to leaders as they face declining budgets and resources? How do they think about this, Quint? Well, I think they're short term and long term. And I know probably every one of your listeners know in the short term, and I've been involved in this. I was just sitting here thinking when I I worked um, for a collaborative, cooperative teaching organization where, you know, you went out to rural districts and my first office was in a first grade classroom at Harmony Elementary School in Milton, Wisconsin, because the school um, enrollment declined so much. They were using the school for other stuff and we rented it from them. Then about three years later, we got kicked out because then their enrollment went back. So I think like anything, there's nothing that's for sure. There's nothing permanent. You're going to have some quick short-term things. You know, the the average superintendent of schools, like any CEO, looks at things like, how can I slow down accounts payable? Because that's, you know, you get it's cash. How do I hang on to my cash? Um, How do I redo vendors? You know, how do I talk to vendors and see if I can delay payments? What construction projects can I possibly hold off on? Um, What's happening with my financing, um, my debt financing? Do I have any lines of credit? Almost anybody I've ever talked to that now in the last three to six weeks have pulled their line of credits to hold on to cash. Mm -hmm. So I think those those permanent, those things we look at real quickly just to give us a little little breathing room. Um, Then the second thing I think is as you've adjusted, and my compliments to the schools. I mean, do you, do you realize I've done it in, in healthcare with telehealth? You know, we've been kicking around telehealth for about yeah. 15 years. And all of a sudden, places that have done it in three weeks, what it, they would have not done in 10 years. Seriously, I was talking That's to a right. Seattle hospital the other day, and he said, we've been kicking around telehealth forever. And now in the last three weeks, we've done more than we've done in years because we were forced to. So I, I think the other thing is my compliments to these educators who have quickly adapted to online learning. And I think one of the things I would certainly do is take time now to learn from our teachers and our principals. What have we learned? What have we learned from being online? What can stick? What do we have that could actually save some money in the future by going online? I also think we've learned with parent communication. I mean, you, you talk to teachers and their parent communication is better than many of them have ever had have before. Yeah. What type of tutorials is there for e-learning for their parents now have it at home? And the reality is if you don't have as much facilities, can you stretch some of your administration a little bit? Because the one thing we've learned in, in healthcare, which I think really goes back to education, in healthcare, we never wanted to cut at the bedside. That was the last resort. I think in education, the last resort has to be messing close to the student. 
how do you keep the resources for the student as the last thing to cut, not the first thing or the second one? Yeah, and Quint, you know, one of the conversations I've had over the past week, too, is, you know, we're looking at the academics and how do we, like, as you talked about, you know, just some of the phenomenal work that schools and teachers have done to reinforce learning and, and change the learning into that virtual environment, the communication with the parents. And we've also had conversations with individuals who are in the oper in operations, you know, so it's the conversation about, I, th I, I just think about what you what we learn from healthcare, you know, our idea of being clean, the cleanliness of our environment in schools is probably going to have to be even more, we have to get more attention placed on that, you know, and thinking more like a healthcare organization. I've, I've talked to a couple of individuals who are managed custodial workers, for example, and they're saying, you know, we have to retool people to really move up the levels of cleaning. So, I mean, how do you how do you think, you know, when we're looking at, at ways that we're making decisions and resources, does that resonate with you from your healthcare experience and what you had to focus on in the operational area? Well, I think it's gonna what it's gonna do is create a healthier a healthier world. I mean, if you look at it, um, we own a candy store and the reason we closed our candy store is because kids couldn't keep their fingers off all the stuff when they come in compared to an adult store. So I just met this morning on a candy store. And I know it sounds crazy, but children from an early age now are going to seriously learn hand washing. I think we're going to take temperatures of every adult that comes into our school district. I think we're going to take temperatures of children. I think we're going to handle things like hygiene so much better, which is going to actually lead, as you know, to, to better enrollment. I mean, when you look at, again, going back to school districts, those days where you count how many kids you have in your school, because that's based on what your reimbursement is. I think we're gonna keep kids healthier. Online is gonna be vital. You know, I, I love the school, Janet, years ago when I went to one of your programs. You know, what, oh, excuse me, one of the things I did years ago is I, I donated some money to Janesville, Wisconsin to travel the country to learn from other schools. And they went to Kentucky to a school with way more poverty than them that had better academic achievement than them. So that's what that excuse out the window and they found that the school teacher there did such a better job with the parents before school started so i, I think another great advantage we're going to have is the fact that we're teaching we're learning more and more how to impact parents um, we're right now doing a program here in pensacola for parents of children under three with harvard university where we have the text of parents and then so many times per week they get a text from us on what to do with their child so I think for schools, the texting of parents, the reminding of parents, even though they've done it, I think we can take it to another level. So I think from hygiene to education to looking at what, what can be expanded, can e-learning be expanded? You know, medical schools let some of their students out earlier to go into school. Can we look at high school? How long does it have to be? How fast can kids get through? So I, I think it's a great time for some school districts to reinvent themselves a little bit or a lot. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's really, it's exciting to see what the opportunities are out there. You know, so speaking of opportunities, you know, sometimes there are natural places when people are thinking about cutting budgets, you know, they, they think about just short time cuts and not the long term gain for what we're talking about now. You know, what are, what are some places that districts should not cut or should consider it to, to keep to make sure that they are reinforcing the important aspects of an organization or the district. Well, I just had this conversation a little while ago with a police chief of a city. You don't cut training. I, I think the biggest mistake anybody makes ever is the first place they go is training, which is why don't you just cut the future of your organization? Because that's really what you're, that's almost like saying, well, let's quit preschool and early learning to save money right yeah. now when that's where we should be. And the other thing which is great about what's happening is the e-learning, the online learning. I mean, I don't, I think you can explode your training development right now. Um, for us in leadership, principals could take advantage of this. We're offering so many courses now on leading and training that people can get online and, you know, and they can do it not just online courses, but interaction training. So the one thing I've never, ever, ever cut budget on is training and development. And everybody knew that. I made that real clear. This is not, I'm not going to mess with. The other thing in, in healthcare, we always said, we're not going to touch at the bedside. 
which in education we were not going to cut with the direct student teaching loan. That puts pressure on the executives to look at themselves. And also, it's a good time to maybe, maybe the community's politically been so connected to some things that you weren't able to change it. You weren't able to, to consolidate it. This is a good time with the external pressure to make some tough decisions that maybe you weren't able to make before. And the community, though they might not like it, they'll accept it. And there's a difference between accepting and liking. So it might be the right time to consolidate something. It might be the right time to stop doing something. It might be the right time to start doing something like more online learning. This is a perfect time to make tough decisions because the community now knows you know you have no choice. You know, before we could say, well, money's tight, things are rough, we're not getting enough money. Well, now they know it. I mean, if you look at taxes, if you look at what's going to happen here, we're all going to have a lot less money. So for a superintendent of schools or a principal, this is sort of the perfect time to put in some changes they've always wanted to put in, but knew they might get pushback. They'll still get pushback, but not as much. Yeah, I I really, really like that that um that approach quint you know it's as i wake up every day i'm just that's what's on my mind front and center as i'm connecting with people that we work with is how do we get how do how do how can i help to have the right conversations with leaders that reframe their thinking to opportunity and what we can do differently and looking at what we've learned in order to make that transition so i just you know i just i love this conversation and i'm not saying you don't reduce dollars for certain things because I think you can be more effective and efficient. I think today's training dollars can go a lot farther because of online learning. I think some of the time money you might have spent on parent education goes quicker. I just think this is time. What can we use with the technology we've learned and more efficient and effective? But then also, and I'm, this is not an education story, Janet, but um, I work, I'm still in healthcare a bit. And there was a hospital system that did cardiovascular surgery at two of their hospitals out of the six they own. And they used a crisis to consolidate into one. And it was really emotional because they all wanted their own cardiovascular surgery center. You know, you, you had to have it. But when they consolidated to one, the beauty is their clinical quality is going through the roof now. So I think this is a good time to look at should there something that be cons consolidated? Should there something that could be stopped? Or should there be certain things that should be expanded, such yeah. as online learning, flexibility with student learning, flexibility with teacher schedules? Yeah. As we close today, Quint, as you look out, you've provided some great recommendations up to this point. And as you look out to, to leaders in general, you know, leaders at schools, leaders in healthcare organizations, leaders in the community, and they're going to face the things that are in front of them. And part of that is going to be cost reduction. What are maybe the three recommendations that you would, three to five recommendations that you would just say, you know, just keep focus right here? Well, first of all, I think you have to look at obstacles as opportunities. And I think high performers take obstacles and somehow figure out how they're an opportunity. Number two, if you have to put, if there's going to be pain, pull the bandage off. You know, I always say it's not that snow that'll pull. If you're going to have to make a tough decision, pull the bandage right off because people are going to be upset with you right off the bat. So why prolong it? And number three, I think realize that you're going to be, I know it's difficult, but we've learned so much. And I want to commend the school districts that have gone to online learning. It's like telehealth. Trust me. We want, and nobody's complaining about telehealth right now. What they're saying is, thank gosh, we have better access than we've ever had before. And I think the use of technology is just going to make, I think, an educator's life much better. And the other thing I would do, I would try to keep, I would not try to mess again. Every, I would take it and turn the organization upside down. That you don't, you stay away from the things that touch the student and you go to those last. As I listen to you today, you know, I've, I've learned from you. I've had the opportunity over the years to spend some good quality time with you learning and having fun too on, you know, some good road trips, you know, on the side that we've had. And, you know, as I think about uh, my conversations with our team right now, 
you know, I now know kind of why I'm having the conversations that I am with them, you know, because as I listen to what you say, you know, you've just instilled all those things in, into me. And I think it's what makes the difference in the, the lives of our leaders and in this world, Quint. So thank you so much for just being with us today. I appreciate you so much. We always learn from you and uh, just appreciate the opportunity to stay connected with you. Well, I get fired up talking to you, Janet. I mean, you know, I feel like I'm in a locker room and I'm going to run right outside here. Um, I, you know, I love what, what you guys do at Studer Education and I love what the school districts you work with do because, you know, you work with the best school districts in the country because the best school districts always want to get better. So, so thank you for the great impact you're having on children. And that's why we're in this. You got it. At the end of the day, that's exactly what it is. Thank you very much. So you've heard a number of, of call to actions that Quint has provided to us today. And, you know, as, as always, I would just encourage you to go back and as you're listening to the podcast, jot down the one or two things that you can do uh, this week. And then the other thing with this podcast and the content here is jot down what you'll do as you move through the leadership phases into the summer and next year, as you think about maybe turning your world upside down and what that would mean for you as a leader, you know, really think broader than what maybe we're thinking of in terms of every day right now. Uh, so just appreciate you all joining us today. And uh, thank you again to Quint. Look forward to our time together next week with you. So I thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. Please share the podcast, make sure you're subscribed, and I look forward to connecting with you next week as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that you and we can be our best at work. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, just jump over to studereducation.com slash podcast. So you all stay safe out there, uh, be well, and have a great day.